From original Crip World, I have eight. Trey, what up, man? Chilling, chilling, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, how old are you? Me? Yeah. I'm all 51. Okay. All right. So we're around the same age. I'm 44, so I, I consider that, you know, in the same yeah, age, yeah. general age. Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in L.A., man, South Central, Western. And uh, I've been back and forth from uh, L.A. to Texas to Houston. Okay. So 51, all right. So you were coming up in the 80s. 90s um, yeah that, that, that was our time the 80s but uh, you know the 80s was crazy but i tell people the 90s was was crazier you know what i mean and yeah that was a time when you couldn't really uh walk to the corner store by yourself it, it was just a hectic time yeah i think in 93 or 94 we had upwards of 2500 homicides in one year yeah. in los angeles and to give people a comparison in 2021 we had almost 400 so if you guys think shit's crazy now, just imagine, like my man said, you know, walking around back in the 90s, even as a civilian like myself, man, it was just, I remember there was gangs everywhere. Every corner, there were, there were just a bunch of gangsters hanging out. Yeah, you could, like, just, I tell people, like, you know, back in the days, if people walk around, and uh, even if you wasn't from a set, people would bang on you just because you had them colors on, you know? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. That was the time where we had to... uh we couldn't wear like Raider gear to school. You remember what they would, they were banning Raider gear and, and yeah, pen, uh, big jackets and, and, and British Nikes, you know, things like yeah. that. Cause it all had some sort of gang, you know, ties to it. Yeah. All them logos mean something, you know, for every hood, there's a logo that represents them. You know, you see, you rocking them starter jackets and British Nikes, shit, even Fila, you know, stuff like that. It was all considered gang related. Damn dog. That's crazy. And I tell anybody who visits LA, just if you're a fan of a sports team, just don't bring the hat. Don't don't wear your hat enough because every damn sports hat is affiliated with some gang in LA, and you don't want somebody getting the wrong, wrong, uh, you know. <laughs> and then you know, it's, I mean, you could be rocking a the A's hat, and this stands for something in the black community, then it stands for something else in the in the SA hood, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, did you did you gangbang? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm from Atre Gangster Crip. Okay, what? Yeah. Uh, what? How old were you when you uh, first, you know, hit the streets? Uh, um, man, I would say I started peeping game when I was around twelve, but I didn't really uh, get active till I was probably like sixteen or so. Okay, but I mean, it was everywhere, you know. Even if you wasn't from the neighborhood, you was from the neighborhood, you know. I mean, because if you grew up in, say, a Trey hood and you had to go to school somewhere else, you was considered a Trey because that was where you was from. Same for, like, 60s. If you was from over there, even though you wasn't an active 60s member or related to somebody, you was from 60s. So 12 years old, Let's. Uh, I would love to go back, you know, to that time. Um, what was going on in your in your life mentally? I mean, um, did you grow up mom, dad? Like, what was your upbringing like and all that? Uh, man, well, my father wasn't around, so I had cousins and uncles that was already banging. They was, you know, from the neighborhood, and I used to hang with them, and that's what made me want to get in, really, on the cool. Like, I thought that was, that was the thing to do because everybody was doing it. Even the square ass people, you know. Yeah, and the music that was coming out was making it seem cool. We had movies like Colors and you know stuff like that. Oh. What do you remember about Colors coming out? Man, I remember when Colors came out. I mean, the line, the line, just to get into that theater, it was it was crazy. You know that security, cops everywhere. You had blood, you had cribs, you had people everywhere. It, it, something was supposed to go down, you know. But I, man, that movie right there, it 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 brought it out. It it, it made it stand out because you, you know, Gang Bang was already was already in the news, you know. But when people saw Colors, it was like a whole nother level. It it, it made it look good, you know. It made it look cool. Romanticized. Made people want to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember I, I, I my, my mom would not let me see it in the theater because of just all the backlash. And, you know, there was, you always heard about shootings and things like that. But I got to see it at a, the first time I ever saw it was on video cassette. And I think I was, it was a, it was like a three week wait, dog, because everybody wanted to see it when it came out, man. And yeah, I just remember watching it like, damn, that shit's, uh, yeah, and I, it, it's just so crazy because it's like I live, like I'm looking at a place where I live, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, oh shit, that looks like, my neighborhood. I was in East Long Beach at the time, but uh, yeah, yeah, man. It was yeah, crazy. you know, a lot of those people in that movie was real gang members. You know, there was only a handful of, act- of actors in there. You know, so it it was like real. You know, because a lot of them weren't acting; they were just being themselves. Yeah, man. What an interesting time. And then we, we had uh, what what do you remember? Did you grow up listening to like NWA and gangster rap? And what were your first thoughts when you? We're like, yeah, they're yeah. talking about shit I'm doing or I'm relating to. Yeah, like, uh, well, before NWA, we were jamming Schooly D. Oh, yeah. I think, he, yeah, I think he's from rap, yeah. Philly, right? Yeah. Philly or New York, one yeah, of those. Yeah. I think he's from Philly. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we were jamming him, you know, Parkside Killer and all that. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, uh, King T. Um, there was just a bunch of little underground, you know, like Toddy T., um, Mr. Master Spade, all of them was before NWA on the cool. It just NWA just came out hard on the, on the mainstream. But I, I remember, you know, uh, straight out of Compton, the song, uh, all that. Even express yourself, like the videos that were being played. It was, you know, just like you said, the Raider gear, you know, all in black, gold chains. It was like, like rapping about us, rapping about the streets. Even though they they were hood, you know, because they never really threw up a hood, but they was they they was real. Dude, I loved it. Yeah. What years were you most active? Out of um, school? I want to say from the mid '80s up to late '90s. After that, you know. Kids and cases and stuff like that made people want to chill, you know. But during those times, yeah, I, I was active in the streets on that, being shot, drunk, all kinds of stuff like that. How many times have you been shot? I've been shot one time. I got shot twice that that time. And um, crazy, crazy part is it was it was a youngster that shot me. He was like fifteen years old. Mm. He, there was an incident where. Uh, I had went to jail. Well, the day before, you know, this dude, I knew him from around the neighborhood. He wasn't from the hood, but he was, he was coming down, like swinging his car. And I had my daughter with me and I, I, it was my fault too. I didn't have her in the baby seat. I had her sitting with me and I had to break real hard and she kind of fell. And, uh, you know, well, I'm all pissed and shit. And, um, I went to jail that night. I got out the next morning. I found out who it was and happened to be that youngster. So I rolled up on him and I slapped him a few times. Well, he left, came back about two hours later and came back and did his thing. Uh I got shot in the arm and on my jawbone. And I was like, man, on on the cool, I was like, man, I wasn't even mad at the fool because I was like, that's something I would have done. It was just on some gangster shit. But he he got ghosts. I I don't know whatever happened to that boy. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. So you mentioned cases. Um, have you done jail or prison time? Yeah, I've done a bunch of county time. Uh, as far as prison time, I've done it in Texas. I never hit the system in California. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've done some years here in Texas. That's where I'm at now. Okay. Damn, yeah. if, you can, um, if you can put a number on it, how many years would you say you've given to the system? Oh, man, uh, including county time? Yeah. I'm going to say at least a good 10 years, bro. Yeah, county time, uh, boot camps, uh, and prison time. Yeah. Damn. Talk to me about your experience in county. Uh, I'm assuming you were banging at the time. What's what's it like? I've, I've heard horror stories. You know, what, what what's it like entering county as an active gang member? Man, well, I mean, it, it, it really depends on yourself, you know, because as far as being a gang member, people gonna run up on you regardless. You know, like 
whether it's even your own set, they're going to, you know, going to test your heart. Um, you just got to, got to put in work, got to hold it down because you're going to have to run a fade regardless with the other hood. Sometimes even your own hood, they, they, you know, like I said, they might run up on you just to see if you're really from there. Cause there's a lot of people that go in and say, Oh, well, I'm from this hood, but ain't nobody ever heard of you. So you got to kind of prove yourself, you know, but it's crazy, you know, doing, doing county time and prison time is two different things. If I don't ever want to go back, but if I had to, I'd rather do prison time because sitting in the county is like just doing one month feels like a year. You do a year in, in prison, it feels like three weeks just because I don't know why. Hmm. Time just flies in the pen. Safety-wise, do you feel safer in prison? Or is it just, is it because I've heard both I've heard I've asked people what, what was more dangerous for them L.A. County or prison and a lot of people said county and others said prison. Yeah, yeah. The the, the county I think the county is more dangerous. Uh, you got a bunch of youngsters that uh want to make a name for themselves. They know they're not going to be on that chain to prison, so they want to put in work in the county. You know, but. Uh, when you get to the pen, it's, it's, it's a whole different vibe. People just trying to go home. Yeah, you got your lifers and shit that make it hard on people that got numbers. But um, as far as being comfortable, I think the penitentiary is more comfortable than being in the county. Mm. And you did prison time in Texas, right, you said? Yeah, I did uh, three years here in Texas. and um, I, I've never done... Uh, prison time in California, but I know the politics and stuff because all the big homies and the shit, even the young homies that have been down, and um, it's it's a different vibe. And in, in these, uh, they call it uh, TDC, Texas Department of Correction. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, I've never done time in a California prison, but over here, when I first went in there, it was crazy because you got rolling sixties, eight trays, you got Hoover's. And all, they're all at the same table. They're all one. That's one thing about Texas, man. They believe in that crib. Like, they don't beef with each other down here. Like, like you know, like in L.A., when uh, 60s and trades, they see each other, it's automatic go. Mm-hmm. Not, not down here, man. They believe in that crib. Like, they're like, we're all cribs. And that, that's what it is. You know, they're not, they don't have that, that, that hatred for, like the Cali does, because like they say, they, they ain't never killed one of my homeboys, even though we're from that set. It's, it's different. Like, the first time I seen a 5'9 Hoover and a Rolling 60 eating together, and I was like, what the fuck? And I told a homeboy, and he told me, he's like, nah, we don't do that shit down here, man. We all won. And I was like, damn, that's what's up. What's the craziest thing you've seen behind bars, whether it be county or prison? Man, um, in the pen, we went on lockdown. They have a six-month lockdown every six months. It's, it's their way to clean up the the whole unit, the prison. They they go through everybody's stuff, man. So you're on a, you're on your bunk, you're on your cell for uh, at least three weeks. You shower twice a week, and um, well, in the unit next to us, these uh. Aryans, uh, they had a black dude. I don't know where he was from, but um, they raped him and killed him. Damn. Then um, when I was at this other unit, this uh, MS-13 got into it with two 18th Street dudes, and he chunked one off the t- uh, third tier, and he stabbed the other one. One against two, that little MS guy went hard. I've had people on my show who compare prison to modern day slavery. Would you uh, Would yeah. you say it's a, a, a fair comparison? Yeah, yeah. Um, but see, the the uh, like I said, I've never done time in in California in the prison system. So down here, all the prisons are run by Nigerians, and um, yes, yeah, private uh, prison all- like privates or. No, all, all the all the prisons. My Nigerians, all the, huh? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The the down to the guards, down to the warden, oh. uh, the staff. It's all Nigerians, and um, 
Like, uh, for example, uh, I had a friend from Southwest, and um, that's that's this part of Houston, and um, he he came in one day looking all sad, and I was like, "What's up, Southwest?" He's like, "Man, I'm gonna get deported." I said, "What?" He's like, "I'm like, where they deporting you to?" He said, "Africa," and I said, "What the fuck?" So the guards that are Nigerians, they used to tell him. You water down nigga. He's like, you're a water down nigga. They're like, you stay over there where we from, you never make it. So yeah, they they treat you like shit down here, man. Um, they feed you twice twice a day. There ain't no three meals down here. You gotta you gotta get up and get that breakfast at uh four in the morning, and dinner is at six. But there ain't no lunch over here. Damn, like that. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Like they had a bunch of. Um, Sit downs, hunger strikes, and stuff, and, but that shit didn't work, man. They 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 run this shit, man. They you gonna do what they say? Damn. I, you know what I I was expecting you to say like you know the white folks run it or like the clan or some shit, not Nigerians. That's that's interesting. Um, no, well, I mean as far as the staffs and stuff, but uh, as, as far as running the system, the like prison uh, gang wise, uh, they got. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Tango Blast. Yeah, yeah. They they run the system in Texas, bro. They uh, there's not a unit you're not gonna go to where they're about at least 300 strong. Tango Blast runs every unit in Texas, and um, their biggest rival is Crip. They fuck with Bloods. They fuck with Latin Kings. They fuck with everybody but the Crips. That's a ongoing war since the uh, late 90s. And, um, but yeah, them boys, they, they run the shit down here. Mm. So when you entered, um, are you, are you like, is that, uh, is it on site with them or do you guys click up for numbers reasons? Like, cause you're all black or whatever the case may be. As far as, uh, like what the bloods and crips. Yeah. Just, <clears throat> yeah. Behind prison or in prison, are you guys like coming together as one or is it still on site with your enemy? Um, it depends only if it's a racial thing, we, we'll click up. But, um, as far as Bloods and Crips sitting at the same table, it, it, it don't happen. Like you can have domino games, chess games, basketball games, but it always leads to something. So everybody's on, on that side and they're on that side. And like I said, if it ain't no racial shit, ain't no coming together. Like with the with the beef with the Tango Blast, um, when I was down there, I remember some shit happened and um, the Bloods came up and they because down here they got tree tops, they got uh, all that just just like in Cali, and um, they came to to Chris and they were like, you know, shit go down, we're gonna back y'all up because it's us against all the other races and shit, but um, it. it like I said, when they, them other colors, they, they outnumbered the blacks down here, man. It, it, that's just a fact. Gotcha. How much money, if you want to work a legit job, you know, behind bars, how much money are you making per hour? Uh, like, as far as working in the jail, like, yeah, like an inmate? Inmates, yeah, so, yeah. Like pennies, man, well, not, Like pennies or something like that? Yeah, like I had a... One of my boys, he was a white boy. He was a five dudes Hoover. He was getting paid like fifteen cents to be the barber, and uh, I worked the kitchen. I was getting paid like seven cents an hour. It ain't, it ain't shit, man. It ain't shit. You can't even buy a stamp. How many friends and family would you say you've lost to the gang life? If you if you could put a number on it, um, man, it's. Friends and family all together, I'd probably say a good, I'm going to say like 60. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, we grew up in that time where you was earning them stripes. You was really trying to get your name made. So it was on on site when you seen the enemy. So, and then, you know, like as far as family, uh, I have an older brother. He didn't bang. I got a younger brother. He didn't bang. It's just like the black sheep of the family, me, my cousin, and uh, a few uncles. 
but that was it, man. But yeah, I'm about sixty, mm. about sixty or so. Because you guys have seen, a lot of former gangbangers have seen a lot of stuff that is comparable to you know army vets and and people who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq and Vietnam and shit like that. But do you think uh, the average gang member, former gangbanger, suffers from PTSD? Yeah, see, I, I was telling somebody that too, man. I was like, you know, because I, I remember seeing something on TV about kids who didn't grow up, grow up gangbanging but witnessed it and them having that, you know. And I, I do believe yeah. that that affects us as well, you know, because we were in that war and um, these motherfuckers stay shell-shocked, you know. But and like the like the people nowadays, it's like 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 I tell these kids now, like it's easy to be a soldier when there ain't no war, you know, because gang banging what it is now, nothing like it was back then. Yeah, they walking around with big guns, extended clips, but for what? You know what I'm saying? I'm like I tell a lot of people, like man, uh, nowadays people ain't even getting shot. You got motherfuckers dying from heart attacks, car wrecks, you know, just random ass shit. So why walk around with a big ass pistol? You ain't gonna use it. Man, let's talk a little bit more about original Crip World. I want to go back. Uh, you said you've been collecting pictures for uh, upwards of like 20 years, right? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, like like I said, I, I, I started fuck with the AOL and shit, but, you know, that, that was trying to collect money and stuff, so I left it alone, and then uh, I heard of MySpace, and, uh, like, um... I have people in, in this new account that hit me up and they're like, hey, bro, is this the same uh, Crip World for MySpace? And I'm like, yeah. Because yeah. when we made it in MySpace, man, it became a link, bro, like from coast to coast, man. Like people were linking for real, like through that page. And like I had a, uh, I would be, I'm still in contact with uh, Raymond Washington's daughter, Ray Ray. Mm -hmm. And um, at one point we had this guy claiming to be Tookie's lost, lost son. I mean, he looked like him. He was all tatted up with his portraits and stuff. I think he was in Cincinnati, Connecticut or something, but he had all these people claiming, he had all these people thinking that was Tookie's son. And he had a, it was original West Side Gangster Crip. That's the gang he formed. And he had all these people doing crash dumb and shit. And I linked up with this fool named Snoop. He was West Side Gangster Crip from Brooklyn. And he's like, yeah, man, my big my big homie is a Tookie son, this and that. And I was like, well, let me meet this dude. And I met him. And I was like, bro, I, that's not Tookie's son. He has two sons, but that's not one of them. So I linked up with um, Ray Ray, which is uh, Raymond Washington's daughter. And um, there was another person involved in this. I can't remember right now, but... We got down to the bottom of where where he wasn't no kinfolk to Tookie, you know, and um, he hated us for that. But like through that MySpace, through that Crip World, we 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 settled all that. We like it was a link, bro. Like people were hooking up because you know like, you got people in New York that want to go to California because that's the land, you know, and um, they had no connections to nobody in the land. But through that account, people started linking up. Man, it, it was crazy, man. What made you start collecting these pictures, and how do you do your research behind them? Because these are some man. dope, authentic, original pictures. Yeah, man, I got, I got a bunch of classics. Like, I got some classics that people are like, man, I, I, I've never seen that, or like, damn, I, I remember that, but never haven't seen it in 20 years, 30 years. And I don't really know how I started collecting them, man. It's just one day I started saving them, and then I had people submitting them, and I told my, my boy, because I had a friend of mine uh, helping me run it, and um, he's like, man, you should save all this, man. This is like, later on, this is going to be some history. Mm -hmm. And um, ever since then, man, I've just been saving them, and throughout the years, people send them to me. And um, I have people that have been fucking with me since the MySpace days that still fuck with me to this day, and they're like, hey, bro, you know, I got this, I got that. And... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look into the pictures and I'll try to reach out and try to find the people in the pictures because if they're big hitters, you know, they're easy to find. And, um, but I, I, my little book that I got 
well, now it's on a laptop. Back then, the shit was written down. Mm-hmm. But I got all the little info with the, kind of like that, uh, like a encyclopedia to the crip world, you yeah. know? Like I, like, I would like to make a book one day, you know, with all this shit, like a little story behind each picture. Oh, man. That'd be dope, man. That's why I've been collecting all these for the longest, bro. I, I got I got so many pictures, man. It's crazy. Mm. Have you ever thought about doing a YouTube channel based around that? I had one, um, but it got deleted, just like the Instagram. Like, it got deleted like what, maybe a month ago, mm. and that, and then because um, I started that Crip World on Instagram probably twenty thirteen, and why, it was why going, is it getting deleted? I don't know, man. I, I just recently seen a post where they, they labeled the Crips and Bloods as terrorists. I don't know if you've seen that floating around. Yeah, and that any any men- mentioning of Crips and Bloods will be banned from uh, Instagram and Facebook. Damn, how long before but, uh, for YouTube, man? <laughs> but uh, in like 2013, I started the, the Instagram. And then um, it was up for about a year. It got taken down. And I took like a six year break, bro. And I finally made it the recent one. Cause I even had people hit me up like, Hey, is this, uh, the original one? I said, yeah. And they're like, bro, I haven't, I haven't heard from you like in six years. And I didn't realize it was that long, but I don't, I, I feel like making another one on Instagram, but not naming it that. Cause I think that's how it gets targeted, you know, but, um, I probably have to make it private. Cause I was kept it public. Facebook is more like lenient. And that's why I should still up. Damn, that sucks, man. But yeah, just keep collecting that history, dude. That's that's definitely some history. Maybe even do a podcast about it. I don't know, man. Something, dude. Something. Yeah, I thought about doing a podcast, man. I thought about trying to trying to do something with them pictures, man. Because that that's it's history, man. I, I'm like I tell you, man. I got pictures of OGs that. Don't even remember taking those pictures. And they're like, man, that's fucking dope. Came across a couple of quotes on your on your Facebook page, and I would love to get your explanation behind it. Some good stuff here. Um, you put a quote up that says, don't call yourself the big homie if you're leading the little bros to jail or the grave. Can you explain yeah, like, um, Yeah, I like, um, you know, like we all, we all come up as little homies. We all got big homies. Some are fucked up. Some are righteous, you know. But if you go down, you do time. And if you got love for this youngster, you don't want to see him walking that path you just took. You know, you've been to prison. Uh, you went away. You missed out some years. If you got love for the little homie, you don't want that for them, man. Like, I used to be the type of dude that would hand you a gun. Like, ride with me. Not to be my crash dummy, but ride with me. Let's go do some shit. Now I'm the type of dude that be like, you need a job. Like I was, I'm blessed with a good job right now. It's it's more like a career and I say blessed. And, um, that, that's, that's what I mean by that, man. Like if you're really a big homie, like you don't, you don't lead your little homie to crash, man. You got to look out for some people. Cause these people are looking up to you. Like you, you some kind of God, you know, they, they want to be like you. They want to act like you. So if you got these people looking at you, man, Lead them the right way. What are some of the responsibilities of a big homie, in your opinion, if you, you know what I mean? Well, to me, it's kind of different depending on your state of mind, you know, like, like as far as me, I'm not acting more. So if I was an active big homie, I'd be like, hey, we got to ride on this. Hey, we got to take care of that. We got to push this. But I'm not acting I'm I'm living a good life, and um, I try to get my my homies a job, like where I work. Try That's to show them something. To, right the the like I'm blessed with a good job right now, and I have a bunch of little homies that be like, "Hey man, give me a job, this and that." And I know some are good, some are bad. So I'm just gonna have work ethic in them, you know, because they weren't taught that. But I still give them a chance. When you were back in the late '80s, early '90s, mid '90s. Did you ever think you would be where you are right now? No, 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 man. Like, I never had a job. If I needed shoes, I sold dope. If I needed something, 
I would go sell dope. I never ever thought that I would have a. I've had little jobs, but never in my life did I think I'd be like I am right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm at, I'm at a company. We do fiber optics, and um, I was I went in as a warehouse guy. I probably did that four months. Get, they gave me opportunity. I was I'm a supervisor now, where we uh provide uh internet service for a good part of chunk of Texas and Louisiana. And um, never, never, I never thought I'd have a job like this, bro. It's, it's, it's some blue collar stuff. You know, I don't do no labor. It's all paper, match and stuff. But I, I never thought I'd be legit, to be honest. I didn't get my license until I was 30. Wow. Put it like that. Yeah. That says a lot right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, um, <clears throat> what changed in your head? you know, or in your life to make you say, you know what, this gang banging shit is for the birds? Shit, doing time, man, being away from my kids, you know, like, uh, being away from my kids, just missing out. Um, I used to see people in on my son, the same tier I was on, like, oh, man, this homeboy's mom passed away. He didn't get to say goodbye or somebody's kid, this and that, you know, just missing out on stuff like that, man, made me realize, like, this ain't what's up. And it wasn't the actual time, because, like, I tell people, doing time, if you're a strong motherfucker, you can do time, because weak people can do time. It's just how you handle it, man, like, the shit you're missing out on, because, like I said, it was only three years, and it wasn't shit. It wasn't shit, but the shit I missed out on, you know, that that's what made me Made me like, man, nigga, snap out of this shit, bro. Like, shit getting old. Man, well, I'm, I'm glad you're here to tell your story, man. And and um, I definitely appreciate it. And I, I, I appreciate, um, you know, uh, you coming on my show and all that. Um, is it, Now's the chance for you to tell everybody where they could find you. Uh, the floor is yours, man. Yeah, man. Um, y'all, y'all fuck with me, man. I'm on this. Uh, no, I'm not on Instagram. They took it down, but I will be back on there. I got the Crip World, uh, I got the public page, and there's a private group. The link is on there. Just uh, go to your search bar, put Crip World or Original Crip World, and it'll pop up. It'll be there. All the big homies are on there, believe it or not. It, it's crazy. A lot of, you, lot of OGs you, fuck with that page. Yeah, they're on there, man. They're on there, man. And you got a lot of people from different states trying to link up. You'll see it on there, man. People are like, hey, holla at me, man. And... It's there, man. We we can use it for good or we can use it for bad, you know? But I'm just trying to use it for good, man. Spread the gospel. I, I appreciate you having me. I almost didn't make this uh, interview, bro. Uh, I had an accident on, on uh, New Year's, man. I pulled on my, my truck and uh, this uh, my front tire went out. And uh, it shot me into this damn deep-ass wood. The airbags oh knocked me out. I was I was unconscious for three hours. The the troopers couldn't find me. The accident was around ten forty. They didn't find me till like two forty in the morning. Mm. Damn, yeah, uh, man, it was bad. I'm glad you're <laughs> here, man. Are you physical physically wise? Are you okay right now? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I, I walked away, man. I walked away, but uh, I think we had booked this in December, huh? Yeah, the, yeah, and then that happened New Year's night, and so we're here. Damn, dog. Uh, Ooh, somebody's watching little, over you, man. I'm glad to hear that, Damn, that you're okay, man. Ugh, that's scary yeah, shit. You, man. you were out for three yeah, hours? Yeah, bro. And um, the area I was coming from is nothing but woods. So it shot me deep into the woods. That's why the, the police couldn't find me. I was, they said they had walked by like three times looking for me because the, they had a, my truck had a, a detector or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they had a notification. But they couldn't find me because I was so deep in the woods. Damn. Dude. But it's not good, man. Uh, that was a I had a 2015 GMC, but now I got a 2020, so hey. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brightside, I like how you, <laughs> I like how man. you wrapped it up, man. Well, dog, stay safe in this crazy ass world, man, and I'll I'll be in touch with you. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on Thanks, here, man. man. I appreciate you. Take care. All right. Stay blessed. Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace